everyone back here from pat here guys today is an extremely exciting day for me today we're going to be starting 20 new seeds in my garden not only that guys we're going to be adding some tropical exotic plants and medicinals directly in the garden guys this is just such an exciting time for me you who have been with me for the past year know over the past year i've planted multiple i basically started my food for forest from, from nothing and now i'm going to start building on that food forest by adding some more tropical exotics and some more medicinal plants so guys enough talking let's get started seeds and plants that i'm starting in the month of february let's go Alright guys, so I have a ton growing now. I'm like super excited to get these in the ground. So let's look at what we have. Well, before we look at what we have, let's see what we're starting with. So ideally, um, if you're going to start in these little plug trays, you should use a very light potting mix or even a seed starting mix. Here I have an um, natural and organic seed starting mix by Jiffy. You can get that Walmart, probably Home Depot, probably any of your stores you can get it it doesn't matter what the brand is i just saw this i mean i just had this but um the thing is i didn't have enough so i really ended up using mainly my kellogg's um raised bed and potting mix then i mixed in some of this and i mixed in a little perlite that's the the white that you see here um so this is a little bit heavier than i would normally want um ideally when you're doing um seed starting especially with smaller seeds like like beets or carrots you want to have a very light mix if it's a heavier seed like um say like um watermelons pumpkins those heavier seeds can more push through um i made it as light as i could um but this is really mainly kellogg's potting mix um, po um kellogg's kellogg's raised bed mix that i use a pink bag um anyway so what i've done is I have put my mix mixture into these little cells and I've already pre-wet the cells. So I've wet the cells. I, I prefer to start with very moist soil and then put my seeds in rather than put the very small seeds and then water in because a lot of times that causes it to dislodge. So my soil is already moist. I've already put my labels on so I can go really quickly through what I'm doing. Also, what I've done is um, since yesterday, I started soaking some of the seeds. Not all the seeds, some of the seeds. And I'll show you which ones I soak which is versus which ones I'm not soaking. If the seeds are very, very small, you don't wanna, you don't wanna soak them because you know they, they'll probably just disappear in the water or whatever. But bigger seeds, like certain pepper seeds, can handle it. Um, normally, I don't even pre-soak my seeds, but I noticed the last time that my Scotch bonnet peppers took forever to germinate. Um, usually you only need to soak it like a few hours up to a day. It's less than a day now. I, I put it in, I, I put them to soak yesterday evening. So it's less than a day right now, probably about 20 hours. So now is the time to get them out. Um, so let me show you first what I, what I'm soaking. Um, I'm going to plant three different kinds of scotch bonnets. I'm planting my purple scotchy and these are some leftover seeds. I literally just had a handful of seeds from, um, purple scotch bonnet from last year. Kachucha, which is really a red scotch bonnet pepper, but I really love this, this scotch bonnet. It's red, but the flavor and the fragrance is just incredible. And you know how much I love my scotch bonnet. But something about the kachucha, which is in the same family as scotch bonnet, it's like the red one. It's, it's almost like scotch bonnet, but a little bit more flavorful and fragrant. And, and, we, and we people that know scotch bonnet, we know how fragrant it is it's like one of the best peppers um i have a few scotch bonnet pepper seeds believe me all the scotch bonnets that i had grown last spring um towards the end i end up using everything at it and i didn't save any seeds guys that's that's why it's so important to save your seeds but these seeds are from my previous home so all these seeds are from like 2021 2020 2020 21 um that's where all these seeds are from so i'm gonna make sure i germinate these seeds 
make sure I get some healthy plants so I can and I will definitely save seeds next time I have um, market more cucumbers some moringa and this also is from 2020 July 2020 some seeds I had um, left over um, my moringa trees are doing really well in the garden um, I planted one seedling that I had in a pot for the past year um, I planted it over by the chicken run um, last week and within one day they completely stripped the tree so I'm gonna try and plant some more moringa seedlings I probably put a couple on my Etsy store and I'll put a couple more on in my chicken run area I have Haas Seminole pumpkins um, that I purchased recently um, some Jamaican pumpkin and I believe the Jamaican pumpkin seeds are from D mood thank you very much D mood for your Jamaican pumpkin seeds um, I'm gonna plant a couple of those as well as Korean melon those are also from D mood thanks so much he sent me a nice little package with different kinds of seeds I have seminal pumpkin going in I have different kinds of beans I have my bush beans my cow peas my Oregon sugar snap um, these are some free seeds I got from Baker Creek tomato um, what's it called tomato for thorn burns my first time tomato thorn burns terracotta tomatoes first time growing these uh, let me show you what they look like here's what it looks like so these look like they're pretty big tomatoes I just had my first ripe tomato I think that was sweet 100 tomatoes some little red ones the ones that I thought were sweet 100 before were actually Everglades tomatoes they are very very small but very very prolific I've been getting tomatoes off the Everglades mainly um, so we have two different kinds of cucumbers that we're planting um, one is the market more cucumber and the other one is this one is called cucumber jabai shimashirazu so this is what these look like so I'm looking forward to trying these um, I believe market more um, is the one that they said is pretty pest resistant I hope this is the one that's pest resistant because last year I tried planting to make cucumbers they blossom profusely but the cucumber those bugs those um worms cabbage worms just ate them clean so I actually never got any but this year I'm gonna be on the lookout I'm not gonna let things go like that um, I have um, I'm gonna be planting some beets and carrots I'm not gonna use these trays I'm just leaving these here so you can see I'm planting them but I'm not gonna I'm gonna direct sow these directly into the ground and as a matter of fact what I'm doing what I plan on doing this go around I'm not sure how it's gonna work remember a lot of this is new new for me but instead of planting them in the beds because my beds are already full I'm gonna interplant some in the beds um, you're gonna I'm gonna walk through and show you what I'm doing um, instead of waiting for one crop to finish I'm gonna start interplanting certain things in between like the broccoli is on its way out I've already harvested broccoli once I'm gonna about to do the second harvest of the broccoli um, and the leaves so I'm gonna plant some beets and carrots under those leaves to protect it as um, the new seedlings come up and then I'm gonna remove them as they get bigger remove the broccoli leaves as they get bigger so that these can spring up so you guys are going to see me doing a lot more interplanting I have some euchanasia and euchanasia I was very surprised that the flower is this beautiful this is what the euchanasia looks like um, I'm assuming this is the same echinacea that we use medicinally but I'll, I'll have to research this more but if it isn't look at those flowers those flowers are absolutely beautiful so i think i'm gonna plant some of these in the garden itself maybe a couple in the beds because i love to see the flowers but a, a few maybe have a patch in the garden so i can have my euchanasia tea um, from the garden i have purple print zinnia flowers and those are just regular zinnias but they're purple this is what that looks like oops here we go this is what that looks like um i do also have some zinnia heads from my friend diane that lives here the subscriber that lives here she gave me some zinnia heads i'm probably gonna plant some in the garden um i want to kind of have it controlled i don't want to i don't want the garden to be all flowers you know i'm still primarily about food but you know a lot of even flowers have medicinal value 
Um, so I, I want, and plus, not just medicinal, but it's good for your soul. I, I love to look out and see where there's flowering, even flowering bok choy. I think it's just absolutely beautiful. Um, but flowering plants, flower, flowering bushes, you know, it's wonderful. So, and then of course I have all my different scotch bonnets. Um, the red scotch is the same as cachucha. So I'm gonna co combine these. Then, then I'm also gonna be doing some Jamaican pumpkin and Seminole pumpkin, which I think I, that's where I started off. So here are my seeds. Here are all the seeds that I'm soaking. Oh, and back here I have um, some purple and red potatoes. So you guys remember that red potato, I mean the purple potato um, harvest I recently did. There were some little tiny ones that were just underdeveloped that I'm not gonna eat. I'm gonna stick them back in the ground. Some of them actually have eyes. So I'm gonna stick these back in the ground. And I, and I know a couple of you, had, a few of you had said it, you had never seen purple Irish potatoes. I'm going to cut this one so you can see what it looks like on the inside. And here's what it looks like on the inside. So it's not just purple on the outside, it's purple on the inside. Purple Irish potato. Really, really delicious. Really delicious. So you guys can look, be on the lookout for those and plant your purple Irish potatoes. I can actually plant these two pieces separately and have... Two separate potatoes so these i'm gonna stick in the ground um okay and this i, I just planted a few weeks ago but i'll show you where they're popping up I, I planted these are some yard long pole beans um these are some seeds that I saved from last year i planted some seeds in a couple places because guys i am not exaggerating when i say these were the best um string beans i've ever had in my life they're like maybe two week two feet tall but they have a flavor of like edinami when you roast them like i cut them up like string beads and i stir fry them oh my goodness it's so delicious so i planted some of that and then this is just some um marigold seeds i saved a lot of my marigold i have yellow marigolds orange marigolds mixed col colored marigolds i saved the seeds from last year um and i'll show you where a couple already started springing up but i plan on planting a whole lot of marigolds because marigolds it the, the the verdict is out is is not quite in on this one here because some people say marigolds or most people say marigolds um deter pests from your beds but i know certain people think it actually attracts pests i actually had marigolds in my garden last year i did have some pests but i don't think i had any more pests because of the marigolds and i thought i think they're absolutely beautiful so I will definitely be planting more marigolds. All right, so let me show you what else I have. So right now, just on this table, we have 21 different things that I'm, I'm planting. And let me show you what else I'm doing in the garden. All right, so as we step into the garden, the first thing you see in here is the arch where I have my passion fruit, but that's gonna take a while to take over the arch. So what I've done is I've planted a few yard long bean seeds along here because as I tell you, I absolutely love my yard long beans and that's gonna grow and grow up the trellis and I'm gonna be able to pick my yard long beans here. And by the time my passion fruit is ready to start bearing, the yard long beans will be finished. So I'm using the same arch, the same trellis for two different things. I've also planted a few um, marigold seedlings at the very front, but as you can see, here's very weedy. So I'm not sure if they're gonna come up um, I probably need to add some soil here, but that's what I did there. Then over here, um, I planted a few bush baby watermelons. I think that's what I planted. Um, I actually planted something and I meant to come back and put, uh, and, and put a sign and I forgot to put a sign. So I put watermelon bush babies because that's what I think it was. But I have one, two, three coming up. Um, you know, it could be that or it could be some kind of melon. I'm not sure, but you know, that's what I have here. I just planted some, you're gonna see some um, different transplants that I did. The, um, this flat leaf parsley was popping up in a pot. So I just transplanted that. So that's, we're up to what, 23 items. And then over the side, what I did was I planted some lima beans. I believe it's lima beans in between the tomato, in between the bok choy, because the bok choy, is basically on its way out. You see it already has, it has already gone to seed, it's already flowering, but I absolutely love the flowers. So I'm gonna leave it here. But then the lima beans, 
I see I have a couple of them. These will grow up and grow up along the trellis. And so of course this trellis will be utilized until the passion fruit takes it over. So that's, that's how I like to interplant things. So at no point, if I harvest one thing, is the ground empty. There's always something growing. So I have the lima beans coming up while the bok choy is almost on its way out. Um, I, I mentioned to you guys, oh look, Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at that beautiful butterfly. This is why I love my milkweed. Milkweed is one of these flowers or one of these plants that the caterpillars live on. So once you have milkweed in your garden, it really keeps the caterpillars off your plants. Look at that. You see that? These caterpillars will come in. I think that's a swallowtail caterpillar. They'll come in, they lay their eggs and the, the baby caterpillars will basically eat eat live on it it will eat off the entire plant and but the plant always comes back so here you see my milkweed blossoming now um and here below it are the the marigolds i told you about remember i told you i have yellow i have orange and i have mixed these are some mixed ones that i planted you see it has yellow and orange in a flower so these are just coming up now but then below it, you see, I have multiple milkweed plants. I'm going to be potting those up. I'm going to be putting some on the Etsy store if you guys are interested. Um, I have lots of milkweed coming up. The milkweed seeds are so unusual. I'd never seen anything like that. I did a video on that showing how they look almost like cotton balls floating in the air. So I guess below are where the milkweeds came up. So that's something else I'm going to be uh, planting out. All right, so let me see if I see what else we planted. I know I planted a whole lot. So along here, I planted some more yard long beans. This is the third trellis. I planted some more yard long beans. And then of, of course, on the other side, I have the tomatoes. I just planted, finally got my, my sugar, sun sugar yellow hybrid tomatoes. These are the ones I told you are my absolute favorite tomatoes. Um, I thought I'd order some seeds, but the seeds never came. Then I went to, I think, Home Depot the other day and I saw two plants, so I, I just grabbed them. Um, normally I'd like to grow them from seed. It's a lot cheaper. These were almost $6 each when, when you think I could have bought them, but I really do love these tomatoes. And you know, it's already warming up here in Central Florida. So I said, you know what? Let me just get these two in and I'll save the seeds from these so I won't have that issue next year. So back here is where I just harvested all my purple Irish potatoes. Um, and you guys saw that big crop that I got from four sprouted Irish potatoes. If you missed that video, I just posted it last week. So um, what I did, I planted, I took some of the Irish potatoes that I just harvested that were already sprouting. And um, I planted them along here. I planted on this side, I planted the purple Irish potatoes. Then I stuck some red ones here. I also have some more on the that um, I'm gonna stick in the ground because I want to have even triple what I what I harvested before. So I'm gonna stick some more in the ground. All right. So let's see what else we planted. Everything else here, you guys have seen. I have some red gungo that I planted a couple weeks ago from um, Diane, subscriber Diane here, and I can see so far one has sprouted. Um, so these are gunga peas, gandules, but these are the red ones. So I'm really looking forward to um, to trying these. I'm going to be planting these along with the other gunga peas I have. Um, I have my passion fruit coming up. These are passion fruit that I grew from seed. I have lots of other gunga that I'm going to transplant. And these, of course, gunga, gandules. Um, these are seeds I'm, I'm transplanting. So in here, I don't have much that I'm going to transplant right now. Um, I do have some um, Vicks plant that I wanted to see if they would transplant well from cuttings and they have been doing very well. So that's Vicks plant. I'm going to do some more cuttings and transplant them so I can have them on Etsy. Um, my papayas, I think these need to go out on Etsy. I already, I'm going to show you where I planted a couple, but they're not ready yet. Then here, these aren't ready to go out. Um, I have a couple elderberry root cuttings and and those look like they're doing well you can see they're very green at least that one is very green so um a couple elderberry root cuttings i'm gonna plant these in the front yard i do have elderberry in the front but it's not growing well 
So I'm gonna try and plant these. These are just root cuttings I just got. And then here I have some, I've been looking for this forever. I got some very small um, cultivated muscadine and wild muscadine cuttings. So I don't know if these are gonna grow. As you can see the aloe there, I, I rubbed them in aloe before I planted them in the ground. So I'm hoping these come up. Then I'm gonna get my custard apple in the ground and my star apple. Well, my star apple, I think it died back with the cold, but I'm not giving up. Um, and here we have another OT to apple. That's probably gonna go on Etsy. Uh, what else do we have here? I planted some bush, ba bush baby watermelon seeds because I wasn't sure what I planted over there. So this hasn't come up yet. So um, that will be going into the garden this month. All right, so let me show you the new things that I planted in the garden. Um, you guys are going to be very surprised. The garden is really going to be transformed. All right, so before I actually start, I just want to tell you guys, over the past few weeks, I have just been on fire for the garden. Like, I definitely took a break um, towards the end of the year. I was a bit tired. I was a bit burnt out. But now I just have a new appreciation for the garden that the vision is just exploding in my eyes as to what... I know this garden can be so I've been doing some serious planting over the past week so keep in mind we're in February so a lot of things are looking a little ragged right now and but believe me they will come back to life so with that let's start so the first plant that I planted this is called the Persian shield and I know it's very hard to see right now so this one is is just a plant for beauty um, this was on the patio. It was just shedding a lot of leaves on the patio. It wasn't doing well. It's an absolutely beautiful plant once it starts growing. So I place this out here. So I'm hoping this will come back. Then I had mentioned this in the January tour, but I wanted to stop real quick so you can see my coral bush. This plant is spectacular. Look at those leaves and guys, it is now blossoming for the first time. So I had to just stop in real quick so you can see this is what the blossoms look like on the coral bush so very very happy this has been this has been outside for most of the winter and it did really well the bottom leaves got a little yellow but overall it did well um i planted a couple um what's this called Ooh, bone knit bone knit comfrey or bone knit um i planted one at this root and you can see the leaves died back. Actually, I used the leaves. My back was hurting me, so I actually used up the leaves. But you can see it's taken. You can see the leaf is coming back. So you can hardly see it now, but I planted it right beside my Bombay Julie mango tree. Here is a white bird of paradise. This was a gift from Diane. And you can see this is already springing. So this is a white bird of paradise, which I just got in the ground. And then back here, some of this are new transplants and some are popping up from last year. So this is, you, you can't tell now, but this is a red ginger. It's a variegated red ginger. Um, this, I had a couple roots um, sitting, sitting around and they're still alive. So I, I put these in the ground. So I just kind of want to show you these things now, guys, so that when March, April comes and you see the explosion of color, you'll know this is where it started off. Most people would see this and just dump it but I know it has life in it and I know it's coming back. You can tell the green nest right there. Then here, um, this is not a new transplant. This is just my um, mandevilla, which after I cleaned it up, took the weeds out, put some chicken manure in it. You can see how beautiful this is. So guys, this is an old new transplant. So if you remember that Coco Malanga video, Tara Root Edo video I did um, months back, I had planted two edo plants in this pot. So um, everything was completely dried up. There were no, really no leaves, maybe less one leaf. So a few weeks ago, I added more soil. Well, first of all, I dug to see if there were any roots and there were quite a bit of edo, edo roots. Edo is a round, round root, is a round cocoa root. What I'll probably do is um, around May, I'm gonna harvest this so you guys can see the cocoa, the malanga, but I want it to grow back. Now that it's springing back, I'm gonna let it spring back. I mean, th there's so much springing up, so I'm gonna let them all spring back. I'm gonna actually take care of it, fertilize it, water it, so I can get a really good harvest.
And speaking of malangas, guys, um, all my malangas are now springing back. These are the all died back over the winter. And just this week, I see them springing back up. So that means I have quite a bit of taro root or malanga root um, growing underneath. Um, there's another ginger that I just planted here. Um, this is something I want to show you guys. This fungus is called dog vomit. It's not an actual dog vomit, but it's that's what this fungus is called. This started springing up all over my garden. Um, and then when it dries up, it becomes like a, a, a red powder. So I noticed that like I'd be watering my plants and I see this red dust or red powder coming up. What I found out when I researched it, it this is actually a part of the decomposition process where the, the mulch and everything is decomp decomposing. And of course, you know, that's gonna decompose and become soil and feed the plants. So we, we know that the decomposition is actually not a bad thing. So it's all good. Here we have a Joseph coat, and I think most people are familiar with Joseph coat. So this is also a cutting that I took sometime last year. I'm not sure which home I took it from, which, which friend I got it from. Could have been my brother, but from the cutting, this plant was grown in a pot. So I just transplanted it to the ground. I brought my Vicks plant back outside. It was got it took a little beating from the cold, but um, I'm gonna be doing multiple cuttings from here. But you can see, still see, it still looks great. My Vicks plant. Then here, I just transplanted one of my special bananas. I just found out from a subscriber that this is actually ice cream banana. So I'm looking forward to trying ice cream banana for the first time. And behind it, you can see over there in that corner, I planted one of my cranberry hibiscus cuttings. Now that it's warmed up, I'm planting my cuttings outside. So that's gonna add some nice color to that corner. Speaking of color, here is my tricolor shell ginger. This one I may transplant um, under a tree. It really does like shade. You can tell it's getting a little bit beat up, but it's pretty doing pretty well. But I think this is an absolutely beautiful plant, tricolor ginger. Then right beside it, I just transplanted my boro. Oh no, actually, I, I transplanted that last month, so let's skip the boro banana. But here is a, another brand new plant. This is a white ginger, and this I had dug up from uh, my best friend's house. She had a whole bunch of white ginger, so I dug a root. So it's looking a little tired right now, but this will come back. This is white ginger. Over here, I just put a couple gandules or gungapi seedlings that I planted and here again is that this is like the, the, that some of that dog vomit was here look when you kick it see, see that red dust that's that thing I was telling you about all right guys so I plan on planting I have a couple pigeon peas here plan on planting a couple more so I'm gonna have some red and red and um green pigeon peas planted in, in between the two existing ones. Um, pigeon peas, I believe they last only a couple years, so, or a few years, so once these are out, I'll have some new ones coming up. Over here, guys, this is an extremely special find. Look what I have, guys. I have two neem plants. My friend gave me, well, it's, it, she gave me as one, but it looks like there are actually two plants. There are two neem plants, so of course you guys know neem oil every organic garden knows neem oil that is so beneficial against fighting so many diseases and insects so i have my own neem trees now so i'm very happy thank you lorraine i have my very special neem right here then over here i have some papayas that i planted there a little bit they look a little bit stressed out with the transplant, but I'm sure that they'll come back. Um, and in here, um, I actually planted some sprouted onions along the edge. That's what you see all the way around. But guys, look, I actually planted some corn, some sweet corn in the middle. And you can see the sweet corn is just now sprouted up out of the ground. So I'm really excited to see the sweet corn beginning to sprout so garlic and sweet corn in this container some purple Irish potatoes here and then what else um 
Then over here, I haven't planted them yet, but the sugar snap peas and the bush beans I'm gonna use in this container. And then finally, guys, over here, um, I just planted some more, a couple more little pieces of cassava here. That's what those two little stumps are. And then I just planted some Jacob's coat. So on the other side, you saw the Joseph coat. And this is Jacob's coat. So guys, you can see I planted a whole ton of plants. So this is going to really create a really beautiful um, garden. Garden is already beautiful, but it's going to be even more beautiful. Um, so guys, I hope you really enjoy this. And I hope you continue watching this journey as I grow food here in Central Florida, Zone 9B. Till next time, guys. Let's go on out and plant a seed today. Let's grow our own food and let's eat what we grow. And don't forget to share this video and share with others. Till next time. Bye now.